We play and call it work. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Seraphin Battle Tome First Impressions slash Review. Yeah, it's yeah, we, we glanced over it. We played a game, and uh, it's uh, it's, <laughs> it's this was this was a disappointment. I think it's. I feel bad for Steve. I feel bad. I was for excited Steve for this. Here. I was excited for this. I know because he was so excited. I know a lot of people out there were excited, and I uh, just uh, a oh, lot. They're similar. Yeah, they're very simple. Yep, a lot, a lot of hits, a lot of nerfs across the board. An right. army that already wasn't placing or showing up anywhere, or like, like they were already not great. They lost a lot of your preferred playstyle, but sure, I think well, they took hits in a lot of so other places. So there, there well. was one thing that, well, not one. There's a, my, I had a list of personally owned Seraphim Arm, uh, one list. It was, was a Thunderquake Starhost, right? And that was by far and away. Ridiculously overpowered and needed to be addressed. Right, and they did. You even sold it because you just couldn't. It was, play it was sold, I sold it because yeah. it, it was way too overpowered. They needed to address it. They needed to fix it. They needed to rebalance that, and they did. Problem is, they oh just boy. they kept on hitting everything else. Oh yeah. So I believe, rough statement off the top of my head, like everything got nerfed. Every war scroll in here got worse. There's there's probably a couple instances where maybe this thing hits on threes now, or sure. I think ultimately you can argue that maybe everything's worse. I wouldn't. Yeah, everything's different. If we had okay, if we had to generalize, is this a buff to the book? Is this a nerf to the army? Uh, it's it's a nerf. I, yeah. You know, everything just. I was. Is, like, so, is it, everything so tame? So my, my everything exactly right. There's yeah. yeah yeah. But to I, be fair, we're used to things coming out and being very overpowered. True, things have been very. The books have been getting stronger stronger lately. Um, I guess Slaves of Darkness are kind of. I was gonna say Slaves of Darkness were still kind of. Yeah. This feels like on par with Slaves of Darkness. Yep, I'd say so. Um, well, again, another thing is. I was expecting Seraphim to be incredibly obnoxious. Yeah. They were obnoxious before. I actually did not like playing against the Seraphim before because I hated the Skinks. I hated their summoning. I hated their fast teleportation for such yep. a slow-based army. I hated their slan, not casting spells, but just putting them into point. They fixed that yep. at least. Yep, they did. That, that they fixed. So a, a, a direct comparison to Slides of Darkness, I, there was a lot of um, buffs. Right. But overall, they still fell short in my opinion. Right. This one was nothing but hits and nerfs. Yeah, you, you, well, this used to do that. Why well, doesn't do that anymore? Exactly. You guys used to have this, but that's gone now. Anyways, we can, we'll, we, we, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll so, give you more details about that in a moment. Here, here's actually our first impressions. I think we're pretty similar as we get this book. We've only had it for a couple of hours, and granted, there might be a, a style or a way to play these right. things that we haven't seen, but whatever it is, it's not what you previously saw. And it's, it's a complete reset. And it's mind. definitely going to, sorry to interrupt, it's definitely no. going to be something that is. A combination of like five or six different things to make yeah. something good. It's not yeah. like, oh, that one unit is going to be great. There's no. no one great unit. <laughs> There's definitely no one great unit yeah, in here. At all. <laughs> it's um, so, our, our first read through was I think you went to Legion's Abilities first. I went through all the, the War Scrolls first. And right. I'm, I'm going through this like, because well, that's. You remember. Yeah, like, well, that's, that's, that's why they changed that. Why they nerfed that? Why they nerfed that? Oh. Why, the, I never brought those. Why they nerfed that? First I never, thing I immediately went to was Skinks. I wanted to see if Skinks still had that really awesome yeah. ability. Gone. Thank I goodness. love that ability. That, see, Polar Opposites couldn't stand that ability. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm upset. I'd rather have seen the Skinks. Okay, so Skinks previously had an ability where when it's their turn to fight, they could instead just uh, move. Do a retreat. Fall back. They could do a retreat. Do a full move. Yeah. Granted, it was super powerful. Yeah. I'd rather have seen them keep it and have their points cost increase. But what happened was they lost it and their point cost is exactly the same. Right, they lost that ability. Do they always have the ability where they had an extra attack? If no. They had more numbers? No. They gain that. No. So uh, if, they still have fives, right? Yeah, if you have more skinks, you get plus one attack. If uh, you have 15 or more skinks. There's a few more ways to play. Like, I will get to the Seraphim, uh, sorry, um, Source. We'll get to, like, Source Warriors don't have a purpose in this book anymore. They don't right. have a, they're like, like gores from Beast of Chaos. I can think of, like, Matt brought up a point where there's like one reason why you maybe want more Source Warriors over time ago, but it's, 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 a, it's a stretch. Well, I know. I don't agree yeah. with that. Is it because of the objectives? It's because they have more bodies on objectives than Temple Garden. I'd rather... Why not take Temple Garden Skinks? You could do, sure you can do that. Yeah. But I mean, like, comparatively to Temple Guard, if we're comparing them to Temple Also, Guard, Skinks are on a smaller base. You get them on the objectives easier. Right, you could. Yeah. yeah. Faster. Uh, source Warriors... Well, we'll get yeah, to that, yeah. There's... I, yeah, I, I agree. Source Warriors ain't so great. Either way, our first pass to the book, super disappointing. Right. First, pa Usually, when you read a book for the first time... When I, okay, when I think of Slaves of Darkness, I go to Marauders. Yeah, I'm like, you found awesome. something, oh, that's cool, yeah. I'll find a way to use this. The first read-through, there was no, oh, that's cool, I want to try that. Right. None of that. So, okay, let's get into the book a little yes. bit here. What you get with Seraphon is updated lore. They, they completely changed 
Yes, that's cool. Yes, the you know, oh god, the 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 the, the brain's good. Right, check love out, the lore. Check out the lore in this book; it's amazing. Yeah. You have a whole new take on them. Yeah. Uh, essentially, retconned what they are, but in the smart way, where they advance the narrative. Of Ex- them. Yes, exactly yes. in the smart way. So, so now, all the criticisms about the gameplay, not the actual direction they took them. I right. think it's fantastic. They're not so much space race anymore. They're physical, uh, corporeal. Yeah. Oh, I guess they were well, before, but like they're they're an actual, like a source isn't a memory anymore. Now it can be a, a living thing. And they have that represented in the form of the coalesced. So we're going to get into that in a second, but I want to say, to, stay tuned to the end of the video where I discuss uh, my predictions and how I think I have to try these things okay. going forward. But yes, Lucas on something. Um, we have, I have two factions of... In one. So yeah. When you're playing Seraphin, well, you're two not, factions of Seraphin. You're not playing the Seraphin anymore. You have to choose one of two things. You're either it's the, the Starborn. You're either the Starborn or the Coalesced. Now, the Starborn is the Seraphin you, the viewer, are used to what you've been playing. Yeah. They are the ones that can they can summon still. They can. Uh, uh, we'll get. We'll get. We're gonna. We're gonna cover the hits <laughs> to the Seraphin or the Starborn. They can summon. They have the Lords of Time and Space. Teleport. Where they can teleport. What else do they have access to here? Uh, they are. They're all. So they have a rule where they set everything to bravery 10 because Lizardman bravery oh, got reworked. All the bravery is 8 lower. lower. Yeah. But if you're Starborn, you go back to bravery 10 because the Starborn is the old <coughs> Seraphim. It's it's still those that remember being not, remembered. Not that it in. matters, but they're no longer demons. They don't have a they demon lost keyword. The, yeah, they lost the demon keyword. But the Starborn is just the they're, old They're Seraphim. more aligned of how the old Lizardman used to be. Yeah. Um, however, if you play the Starborn, like Lucas says, you still kind of are that celestial entity that you were remembered in. The ones are still up in up in the, the spaces. Now, I believe the Starborn, <coughs> the Starborn had the they had the Lords of Time and Space where you roll a d6 and teleport something. That got well, that got changed that, twice. That, that yeah. got changed twice. <coughs> then it would just pick something and teleport them. They still have that exact same rule. It is, yeah, pick one, pick yeah. one unit. More than nine away. That's yeah. their move. It's a fa- it's a fantastic ability. Yeah. Uh, now, they also have access to Constellations. This is new to both the Coalesced and the Starborn. Where Constellations? You get, that is there where you pick one of the three, like, keyword. You, 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 get, oh, you right. get the rule, the you get the artifact, <coughs> the relic, and you get the ability, right? Now, we'll, we'll get to those in a second. The, the Starborn Seraphim unit summoning got hit so hard. So, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it was too good. They went from probably one of the best summoning armies yeah. to... Either they they, they like, took it from here. I'm gonna put my head off screen. They took it from here and put it down to here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. From the top to the bottom of the screen, it is actually kind of embarrassing how bad it is. Yeah. So uh, before, I, I appreciate this change though. The slan could give up spell casting to get the was it three points per three, give up? Yeah. So now, uh, if your slan gives up, he can only ever give up one of his spells, and it's D three. D three. So you're gonna get. D3 for your slam being the general. You still get that. You get D3 for your slam being in general. You can you only give up, give up one spell. For D3. And you have the action of the bearer, the banner, you get D3. And then that is the base limit. So you're getting a maximum of 3D3 a turn. So you can get up to 9 a turn, 6 on average, as opposed to the... Well, before you can give up spells, you get 3 per spell. So you get minimum 9 plus the 1 plus the the D3. So you, you got a minimum of 9 to 11 on turn 1. That's a minimum of 11. But you could... <laughs> yeah, you, you could um, give up. So you can cast the cogs, give up a spell t- one turn, right. and next turn have an extra spell you can give up. You, you can cast the vortex, the vortex and put your turn. slant on. Yeah, and then so I, it turn. got out of hand. Right. They, they, I think they overcorrected because right. not only did they um, they changed the numbers on the chart too. Yeah. Now the Lord, some okay, so a lot went up a bit. Yeah, um, some went up some a lot. went down a, a little bit. And others went up to the point where you're probably never going to get points. You're going to get it maybe turn five if you roll well enough. Yeah. Now, granted, some of these um, the constellations for the starboard might give you a little bit more points, but not enough to really correct this this yeah. hit that they like have. Like the engine of the gods went from eighteen so many points to thirty. Right. And again, you're only getting six on average a turn at a base level. Right. So, and the engines. If, the, if all, if both your characters are alive. And let's and, and let's be honest, the engine of the gods got reworked into a war state. The engine of the gods. Oh, the engine of the gods. Go, it's so. It's not. I don't know if it's worth it anymore. Uh, so it used to work in the hero phase. Yeah. Now it works in the shooting phase, and you can only do at it at the start of the shooting phase. At the start of your shooting phase, and you can only do it once, no matter how many engines of the gods you have. I wonder if that's. I wonder if that's a mistake, and they're gonna they're gonna fix that. But the way they re- it's pretty clear in the writing that that, that but <laughs> it does leave it up to I wouldn't be surprised if I seen some errata coming. Yeah, like oh, we didn't mean to put that one yeah. word in there. It's like okay, maybe but there only are only one edge of the gods yeah. can roll. Yeah, only you can only ever have you, 
You can have as many as you want, can in your ha in your army, but only one per turn can do it. Unless you're the Thunder Lizard, then you can maybe do it again for a command point. Or you can do it again for a command point, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So, looking at the unit here, you're, before you could summon like 10, 10 20 skinks a turn, easy. Those no skinks problem. would then be super obnoxious. Well, the, uh, 10 skinks were 6 points. They, they still are, except yeah. the skinks are not nearly as good. This, no, yeah. all the other things are really cheap. Um, like the Razor Dawn, the Skink Handlers, um, yeah. they're not 6 anymore. Uh, but they actually reworked how those things work as a unit. There's no longer skin handlers and razor on separately. They are now properly a one hunting unit. pack. They're actually one unit now. You get a unit of four models. One of them has to be the monster, and the other three are the handlers. So you used to be able to summon a, a, a razor or salamander for six. Now it's ten. Right. So you're not getting it on turn one, no matter what, unless there's other ways. To well, get you could. It. You can roll. Oh no, you can't. Right. Even if you roll maximum yeah. nine, unless there's one of these celestial constellations. Because we folk, we'll be honest, we focus a lot on the coalesce because that was the newest thing. Added. We did. Yeah. And we're we're going to talk about them in a second here. But, yeah, it's just, I guess, wanted to get, let you guys know about the unfortunate inertia of the Seraphim. I am, I'm happy to see it get hit, because it was obnoxious before, but this kind of Granted, I, I agree. Uh, it needed to be adjusted. It needed to be hit. It just felt like they, uh, they, they just beat it to death. I'll be honest, I, <coughs> I agree. I think it took a little bit too much of a hit. Granted, you can still, on average, summon 10 skinks a turn, if that's what, all you want to do. For objective grabbing, naturally, right? Uh, the way they summon it was that... Did you have to be, yeah, you have to be near a slant yeah. or an oracle or yep. an astrolith bearer. More than nine away from an enemy. So. And you got your standard command traits and... Oh, wait, those are for everybody. Actually. Those are for everyone. Yeah, you, yeah. Still, you still have your command They're traits, your artifacts of power. Um, the, you have a new lore. The, oh, well, I guess we'll get to the lore after. Yeah. yeah. Was, was, didn't want me either. Uh, okay, so the other faction you have is the Coalesce. These are the ones that have been um, re-manifested proper. These are actual... Physical, have, constant. Yeah. Right. So, so these are... Permanent. Leadership, yeah, permanent. Yeah, permanent. Permanent. Leadership 8 Lizardmans, Seraphim. Um, their rules are quite interesting, though the Coalesced may not summon. They can't remember right. more into So this, this is exactly, this is a separate allegiance ability. The Coalesced do not get Lords of Space and Time. They do not have the capability of summoning, and uh, they do not increase their bravery to 10. Right. Though they do have Cold-Blooded. They do get some nice rules. Cold-Blooded, one of them. They ignore all modifiers to, is it positive or negative? It's positive yeah, or negative. Yeah, they ignore all modifiers to bravery. Right, so you're pretty much always Bravery 8. Bravery 8 is quite good. Right, but when you look at, like, if you have squads of whatever, say you have 10 Saurus Warriors, you won't get that extra one Bravery. True, So you lose but that. you're never going to... But if, but they're if not going to be around long enough to... But if, you, if you're fighting death armies that constantly have negative Bravery things, you, you'll never be affected by those either. You're just at 8, but you're I, not 10. Another one, so Saurus Warriors, Saurus, have, the, they have their, their weapon attack and their jaw attack. Yeah. When in the coalesce, they're a little more primal, right? They have an, all jaw attacks get plus one attack. Right. Now this is interesting. Yes. Because it says jaw attacks. Now jaw weapons used by coalesced units. So that is your whole army. Your whole army becomes coalesced, or your whole army becomes starborn. Now this comes up with carnosaurs uh, and stegodons, stegodons. They gave them a jaw. Yeah. And the what is it called? The cold one knights. Yep. Uh, Look very oh, I wonder if... Go ahead. Yeah, well, look very carefully at your War Scrolls when you're looking at their weapons. Anything that says Jaws will or should be affected by this rule. So your your Carnosaurs that have that five damage Jaw attack, they'll get an extra attack with the Coalesce. Yeah, even the, even the uh, source, the mounts, the Jaws. Right. And the, the biggest evidence so, for that is the fact that... They're, they're all just Jaws. They're just, it, it's not like... It's not like powerful just, Jaws, snapping exactly. Jaws, massive Jaws. So all jaws. So yeah, so that's jaws across the board. So another one, coalesce, another good rule. Right. It's not bad. Not bad. Um, the primeval domain. This one's not going to affect us here at the studio all that much. The problem. Oh is, yeah, I don't think it's affecting anybody. Nobody cares about these. It might. I should say that. That's true. You never know. <laughs> so anyone out there who uses the, you know, when you set up your terrain for your game, you randomly determine what the terrain is. Anything inside of your own territory, if a terrain feature is partially or wholly within the territory of a coalesced army, then any damned, arcane, inspiring, and mystical scenery rules for that terrain feature only apply to coalesced units, so the beneficial ones. And while any deadly and sinister rules for that terrain do not apply to coalesced units. So it essentially shows them... Makes people not want to use them. Right. So maybe they can make use of... I don't know. Right. Yeah. It's, it, they take over their territory. The, the coalesced territory is their well, own. Well, they... Get into the lore, really get into it, but they they change the terrain around them. Right, right? so they actually kind of create these Amazonian like jungles uh, wherever they want to, I guess, settle down. They do have an absolutely amazing ability yes. in the last one. Scaly skin is back, right? But in a way you never would have expected. Yeah, these are old rules back from old Warhammer Fantasy, but I mean, they're completely different mechanics. So, subtract one from the damage inflicted by each successful attack that yes. targets coalescent. Yes. 
Wow. That's huge. Uh, that obviously, that only affects things that are more than one damage. So, but there are a lot of things. That sure. Similar. No, that's the thing. Yeah. Okay, so all these rules, I'm like, wow, okay. I yep. like it. Yep. But now we have to use the war scrolls with these. <laughs> that's the that's the that's, that's the, the biggest problem. issue. That's the that's issue the right problem. there. So again, scaly skin uh, coming into effect. And remember, that's your whole army reduces the damage they take by one. That that's not bad. Honestly, no. That's honestly, let's be honest. Here, that's fantastic. There's some good matchups. Ogres. That's a huge boon when you're fighting and, ogres. Anything with two damage. Right. Anything well, with pretty two pretty much damage. ogres is everything with more than one damage. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I love it. I love it. If you're fighting against Iron Jaws, they have, you pretty much turn off their War Chanters. You well, just counter War Chanters completely. So you could compare this to the Starborn. Uh, summoning is nerfed to the point where I don't... I I, I, I still put... Me, myself, yeah. I put a lot of merit in the ability to teleport and summon. It's all about objectives, right? I know. Yeah. As a Beast Chaos player, I know. Control of the table is important. I think that this... I think the Starborn still will, though, just with table control. You think so? I, I mean, I could be completely wrong. Like, maybe maybe there's a way for the Coalesce just to walk all over their opponent. But the problem is... There's not. There's not. <laughs> it's, it's just the War Scrolls are so lacking. Yeah. Now, granted, we should say we did play a game. There's a game in the Mini War oh, Game yes. Vault. Uh, obviously, we're going to play a game to go along with this. We're going to play a game recorded to get an idea of this first impression before we actually We've play. already played that game. Yeah. But, like, we've already, we're giving our first impressions of the book right. first. Yeah. If you want... To check that out, that's in the Mini War Gaming Vault. Uh, the link down below. You can just get yourself a seven-day free trial and just cancel afterwards if you want to see how the new Coalesce play. Yeah. They want to focus, obviously, on the more primal aspect of the Seraphim. Also, I'm scheduled to play Matthew tomorrow, another game. So I'll be right. playing them again tomorrow. So there will be another backup real soon on YouTube. Probably in the week or two. Real yeah. soon. And uh, do you have any idea what you're going to play for that? I one? do, but I want to talk about... That's probably what I'm going to deal with it. We'll talk about the end of the video, okay. where I think the... The idea might be in this army. And to give you an idea of how the Coalesce could play, I, uh, Steve requested that I played the Osiric Bone Reapers. I did. And I didn't play like a Petrifax. Uh, no. Petrifax. Is it Pe Petrifax Elite? Petrif Someone corrected the pronunciation on that. I can't oh, remember really? what it was. So I, I, admit, I apologize. <laughs> I can't remember. But Petrifax Elite. Uh, I played something okay-ish, something fun that I wanted to play for a bit. And it just you get to see how the Seraphim or the Coalesce uh, stood up against them. That's in the Mini War Gaming Vault. Now... I guess that's pretty much it for the Allegiance ability. There's command traits and everything. And yeah. also, there's six, uh, they call them constellations. Well, I'll call them storm hosts. I'll call them legions. You get that option to shoehorn your army into one specific build based on a certain constellation is what they call okay, them. Okay, so to, so to explain we'll call what Lucas is actually saying here is sub-factions. Yeah, sub-factions. That's, that's the word. Like, we all, every, like, basic chaos have herds. Um... Stormcast Storms have Chambers. This, yeah, um, Storm the, the Lodges for Fire Slayers. Uh, legions for Corn. Yeah, they all yeah, have the, yeah. these are called Constellations, yeah. Right. That's all. And then, uh, yeah, I guess the Legions for the Bone Reapers oh, as well. Oh, you know, if quickly, um, we didn't get a chance to use the terrain feature. Because it wasn't painted up. Not right. painted yet. We, we, I think it's we had no. I think it's, just I think it's a pretty good <laughs> terrain feature. It's better the more terrain you play with. That's it, sure. it, it, could, <laughs> it could hurt. It's it basically you, it, it targets other pieces of terrain on the table and hurts yeah. enemy units that are around the other pieces of terrain. Right. Like we're warping the, the terrain around us. Really cool, actually. Yeah. So I actually dig that it's one. It's got a pretty. You, you choose something within. It's, 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 it's eight. Uh, I think it's unlimited. Thirty-six, range. but within eighteen is better. Right. So you every every enemy unit within three inches of a piece of terrain takes D three mortal wounds on a four up. You get plus two that roll if it's within eighteen, or minus two if it's. Uh, let, me, let me reiterate that because how he said it. So. You pick a, a piece of terrain within 36 inches of right. this piece of terrain. Right. And then every enemy unit... So basically, I'm, I'm the, I will be the pyramid. Luke will be a bunch of trees. Right. My pyramid picks the trees, and everything around the trees, three inches, are going to take mortal wounds on a four-up. This Each actually unit. has unlimited range. You, but if it's more than 36 away, it's minus two to the roll. You just oh, pick, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, you just pick, you're going to put the table unit and everything. Yeah, you're going to have... But if the terrain that you choose to warp is within 18 inches of your pyramid... Right. Realm, realm Shaper Engine. The Realm Shaper You add two to the roll. So you're doing Mortal Wounds everything on a two plus. That's actually fantastic. And you can garrison it too if you really want. Oh yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah. which is kind of cool. So you put 20 models in it and they can fight in and so out of it. For as, for terrain, as far as terrain goes, this is probably one of my favorite. I was, I was impressed with this. I thought it was uh, not a bad piece of dig terrain it, at all. Dig it a lot. No. Okay, so we got three units for the Coalesced. Uh, Draco Draconi... The Dracothonian's tail. Thank you. The things of Sotek and Kodos Claw. Maybe it's four. Is it three and three? Each one's got three. Oh. Yeah. Because Thunder three. Lizard is coalesced. Oh, yeah. Is there only four? I thought. Yeah. Oh, well, look at that. Wait, where's the page? Look at There's that. Just, completely just, unprepared. Yeah. Coalesced get. Okay, so Draconian tail and the things of Sotek are starborn. 
Oh, it's only two each. Two each. Oh, I thought there was three each. Okay, well, I apologize. Um, I don't remember what these all do. I remember none of them stood out to me, except for the Thunder Lizard. Thunder Lizard stood out for you. Yeah, actually, what I I tried. Um, and it, that's the actual name of that. Steve's not making that up. By the way. It's actually called the Thunder Lizard. The Thunder Lizard. Well, it's supposed to be like the constellation, right? Um, oh, I guess <coughs> that makes sense. This one adds two wounds to all of your monsters. It makes Stegadons no longer Behemoth. It makes them Battle Line, which is cool. Stegadons might be. Does, does that work for Engines of the Gods and Stegadons? Stegadons. Just just the Stegadon in general. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna argue that the Stegadon got better. Right. That's the one with the crossbow, the like yes. the war machine on it. Yeah. Everything else got worse. Uh, I think, yeah, actually, I would agree. I think the Stegodons, uh, at least it performed well in the game. I liked the Stegodon. It was kind of scary. It had a good save. It was, um, it was like, the only thing that seemed to have a good save. Yeah. Compared to, like, these days. But, yeah. Uh, this, yeah, the Stegodon definitely got better. Everything else got kind of yeah. worse. Yeah. So, um, we don't have the Stegodons, but I, a list I would like to try would be just Stegodons and Slans. But it literally just be yeah. Stegodons? Just charging in? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of monsters. They, they, they seem to be worth it with their new um, right. crest ability. Uh, War Scroll Battalions. Well, okay, interestingly enough, they no, have... They have five of the same but ish. The, are, they, are they all... Actually, don't check this. Yeah, they're all Star the same. Strike. They have a slightly different okay. name. Yeah. So basically, you have the Thunderquake Star Host and the Thunderquake Temple Host. Yeah. They are the same, but different. Right. So the Thunder Host is... Or sorry, Star Host, I think it's for the um, Starborn. Right. So it has the same requirements. The other one is for the Coalesce. Same requirements, but different rule. One heals. One gives you a Swift savage. savage. But savage. they changed it completely. It's not the overpowered thing it was before. Yeah. It's like reroll runs and charges. Yeah. Or um, add one to attack characteristics for melee weapons, which is still good. Right. So what it used to do before is you could choose if you're a Swift or Savage. If you're a Savage... Reroll all wounds and saves. It yeah. was broken good. You're, all you're used for, it was nuts. And not to mention that the Bastillodons had insane saves already. Yeah. And then the capability to ignore damage. It was just it was an unkillable unit. Right? It was like, that's gone. Completely gone. Uh, which I'm, again, happy for because I found that to be incredibly obnoxious to deal with. But again, it just got hit so hard. So there is the Sunclaw, there is the Fire Lance, the Shadow Strike, and the Thunderquake. And that works for the Coalesced and for the Star Host. It's the exact same units required for all four of them. And then, of course, there's the Battalion of Battalions that we never really talked about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve's not a big fan of them. I mean, I, I've never, I've literally never ran one of these. because You, we usually you only, can't. Even in 3,000 points, it's hard to play. Yeah. <laughs> Because it, it, it's a battalion of all your battalions plus extra things. And all your battalions cost points. This costs points. You're looking at like a three to 5,000 point game to fit that in. Now, granted, there's some armies that can do that 2,000 points. It's just not good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the, bata the battalions aren't, they're not bad. They're not wild, but they're not bad. Well, that's what I'll I, probably play most, honestly, I'll probably play most right. of these at one point or another. That's how battalions are these days. They're not bad. Yeah. They're there to get the extra artifact. They're there to get the command point, And they're there to... Give you a slight buff to the unit. Well, like to bring. actually, the one Source Warrior one is now bad because Source Warriors are garbage. Oh, so that's the Sun Cloud Temple Host. So, so what is this one? Improve the rank characteristic of jaw weapons by one. There you go. That's not so bad. You're, is that coalesced? That's, that's coalesced. coalesced. Yeah. So that's not bad. You get extra tax on your jaws, and now your jaws have run one. But, but they hit source, a five. We have bring Source Warriors. But you're not going to bring Source Warriors. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Okay. So let's get into. You could. You should. <laughs> should. I'm kidding. I'm, 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 a little, I'm a little bitter. He's, um, he's a little bitter right now. That's okay. Because he was excited. I was excited. Okay, Slay Star Masters. Uh, changed up a little bit. You have this ability called Foresight now. In the hero phase, you roll two dice. Every four plus, you get a command point. Cool ability. I love that. Yeah. Uh, they're basic plus one to cast. They're bravery nine base. They get that four up save, and they're not terrible in combat. I mean, fours and threes are the rend. Uh, they have a new spell called uh, Comet's Call. It's a seven plus to cast. So six plus for him. Yeah. Um, you pick D3 units anywhere on the, anywhere on the table. And each of those units takes D3 more wounds. You're, just, you're literally calling comments down from the sky. That's awesome. Amazing. If you cast on a 10 plus, which is going to be fairly easy for you. Because you need a, you just you need a 9 plus, right? Well, 8 because you're going to have an Astral Bear probably, which is the other plus one to cast. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, you pick D6 units to, to take D3 units, uh, D3 more wounds. A amazing ability. It's still um, incredibly random. So though. there's no more, there's no longer a constellation where you have this, you have, you have a, a, after you deploy, you roll a die, consult the chart, and you have a little bonus to your army. Right. Uh, but you could like not cast a spell and change it. That's gone. Uh, I guess you know what. Now that you mention that, 
because I remember, oh yeah, there's the Great Drake. We should probably talk about the rest of the Allegiance abilities. <laughs> you not over them? Uh, there's the, you get to choose uh, sacred a asterisms as well. There was, uh, oh, there's also the contemplations of the ancient ones. So there's two more Allegiance abilities you have for being Seraphon. I apologize, or we apologize, forgot about these. They're pretty basic though. Yeah. There, so at the start of your hero phase, you pick one of the following asterisms, asterisms to be in the ascendant until your next hero phase. You get the Great Drake. These are these are what the Slan used to have, I think. Uh, the Great Drake, you pick one friendly Seraphim hero until the end of the phase. You get to add one to their attack characteristics of melee weapons. Sure. Uh, you can do the Hunter Steed, plus one to run and charge rolls for all your units, which is huge. And the other one is pick one friendly wizard, and you can add one to their casting and dispelling rolls for that wizard into your next hero phase, or for that hero phase, or if it's your opponent's turn, you get plus one to dispelling. Hmm. And then the Contemplations of the Ancient Ones is the other one. At the end of your hero phase, you can pick one friendly slan and replace a spell they know with another spell from that lore. So yeah. they, the slan keeps to get, uh, cycling his spells. Now that, again, works well now because the slan wants to actually cast his spells. Uh, and then the other one is where you have to pick Coalesced or Starborn. Right. Right. Okay. All that, not terrible other than the summoning motivation. Right. Uh, slan, still pretty good. Honestly, he is. He's, he's like 240-ish points. He's 240? He's kind of yeah, pricey, but he's still pretty good. But he's still, he's got seven wounds. He's still pretty good. He I'm gonna could. Bring, I'm going to bring him in every game. If you get still lucky, like him. with that comic call, you could be dishing yeah. a lot of damage with that guy. Uh, plus one to cast and dispel and unbinding. Unbinds or dispels the entire table. Um, his command ability is both the same. I think it's longer range, though. It's like, it's fly and... Uh, I think it's be re-roll stage against shooting. Not supposed to be one stage against shooting. That's good from the heavens. Uh, you can still cast through other units. Right, and then he still can, I don't know if he said the dispelling run binding yeah. from anywhere you want. The whole table. Yeah. Uh, I didn't bother reading Lord Croak. I don't like named characters. <laughs> I'll be He's got a lot of rules. He's, he can cast four spells, apparently, celestial, but he does celestial deliverance. You know, he can keep doing the deliverance over and over yeah. again. Uh, he's got Gift <coughs> from the Heaven, same command ability. Uh, just your generic source characters. We're not going to go over every one of these things because Lord we're going to read the book. Um, we'll talk about the, we'll talk about the, the, big, the big changes. Uh, let's talk about Cars first. So the first one here is the Old Blood. He's much the same, except for the card sword's a little different. Um, massive Jaws is still three attacks, fours and threes, minus one, five damage. Is it always five damage? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you said this ability where they're, if they're both their front claws hit the enemy, oh. it pin them down and give you like... Did that enemy have to be a monster? I don't remember, to be honest with you. I don't, honestly don't remember. Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. It will give you plus two to hit with your massive draws. So you hit on twos. Yeah. So both of those hit. You, you, you hit on twos. Which is still kind of possible, but it's weird, because they, re they remade it because it's now, at, yeah. now you don't need to hit. You don't no. need to hit with it. It's automatic, but it only works if you're attacking a unit or a target that has a wound characteristic of seven or less. So hordes yeah. or like little baby, like chaos spawn, so, like little baby monsters. Uh, your massive draws now just have an ability called pin down, add one to hit rolls made for the attacks if the target has a wound characteristic of seven or less. It was meant to fight big monsters, now it's just better on units. It's better at hordes, uh, pinning down hordes, I suppose. Well, now, anything with one wound or less than six or seven one or less. One to seven, yeah. Is yeah. it less than seven or seven or less? Seven or less. So it's anything from one to seven wounds. Oh, well, they're freaking out over there. Now, <laughs> this is, I think, in a way, is a buff, because you have to rely on your four limbs hitting. Now, you always kind of get it if you're at the right yeah. target. Yeah. And with the command ability, you can give him the Carnosaur or... You, you can give himself plus one to hit. Yeah, he, his command ability is pick a source unit, and he's a source unit yeah. with an 18, and add one to hit roll. So you can make this a two up, no problem. So this isn't such a bad hit. This is not a bad change. I just don't like that rend one. I know, everything's rend one. Every, no like, good rend. Like, this guy will just tear through skeletons super easy. Yeah. Awesome. But like OCR bone reefers or iron well, jaws or anything with a good save I mean, he's going to struggle against. He has three attacks from the jaws. You can get the, uh, he, he's going to have the relic that if you, if you put taking coalesced. Oh, sorry, Thunder Lizard, because that's what I like. Uh, extra attack plus the coalesce give him the extra attack on the draw. Right, like it's it's a lot of damage there. Exactly, it's, it, it's the one rend. It's the one rend. Uh, so hitting on wounding on threes isn't bad, but the one rend is where it kind of falters. So this thing can be a big damage dealer, but again, he's twelve wounds, four up save. So like everything in Age of Sigmar, he can die. I want to I want to make fun of the Scar Veteran a little bit. Yeah, let's make fun of the Scar Veteran. So the Scar Veteran, the only thing I want to make fun of on the Scar Veteran is yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take a War Spear or a War Blade. Yep. They're in the exact same profile, except the War Spear has a uh, reach of two, mm -hmm. and uh, it does one more damage if it charges. The War Blade uh, gets nothing. <laughs> I wonder if there's like a, an error so, there or something. So they're exactly the same profile, <laughs> except one of them has extra range. And it does extra damage, extra damage on the charge. Which one do you take? 
I'm picking the one that has less rules I gotta read. <laughs> Why? There's got to be an error there. Yeah, there's like, an error there. That is, there's no reason to, I, I got to be, unless I am just blind and I can't see it. I actually kind of like the Great Blade, though. Oh, I'm, sure. I don't yeah. hit on fours, though. Yeah, that's Oh. True. We forgot to mention why these guys were nerfed. Oh, yeah. Why everything source was nerfed. The shield no does, longer ignores the first level run. The shield just doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything anymore. <laughs> they have, yeah. Yep. Your source warriors, big, big shield that covers half their body. Uh, it doesn't do anything. You don't attack with it anymore. It's yep. just... Yep. It used to... You ignored Ren 1, but Ren 2 worked normally. What kind of save did the Source have before? A 5-up or a 4-up? They did 4-up. Okay, so it's still got 4-up save. Now, the Source Guard, they went to 2 wounds. That's a nice Now, shot. they lost that thing. Yep. Um, they don't get extra save for being near characters anymore. You used to be able to re-roll you can, the save you, you, skink Well, too. there's a Skink Priest that would make you re-roll your saves. Right, yeah. So you get to do 2-up re-rollable. Yeah. Um, That's not a thing. You get a four up save, like, that is it. Now, what they do is uh, if a slant is within three inches of them, any wound allocated to that slant can be set to these guys on a two plus. Right. So they're selfless protectors. They're meant to be around slants. So, what I mentioned earlier, where the book is simpler, they simply just took rules away from things. These war scrolls are just thinner. Yeah. So, so source weird. guard are 100 points for five. And then source warriors are 100 points for 10? 90 points for 10. 90 points for 10. So, this guy has two attacks. Threes and threes, right? One, one damage. That's a good profile. It's it's yeah it, yep. yeah. I mean, it's not as good as it was, but it's just very right, very then, basic. You know, Nothing special about him. Now I think before they used to combine their jaw and shield bash attack into one yeah. profile. Now it's just powerful jaws, which one attack fives and fours, no rend, one damage. So it's not a good attack. But if you're the coalesce, has two attacks with that, and there's ways to well, if you're a source warrior, you can give it a rend, which at that point is not bad. But hitting on fives is rough. The fact that these guys lost their ability to ignore Rend, and they lost the bonuses of their save for being near heroes, and I'm pretty sure they... Did they go down to points? Do you remember how much they were before? Ten points. Wow. Are you sure? Yeah, they got two wow. wounds now. They, they got an extra wound. I, that's not... I, I'd rather have one wound and the two-up save that ignored Rend one. Well, because you just... Yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, maybe. obviously that was very weak to mortal wounds, but there's got to be a weakness somewhere. These guys are just weak to everything now. Um, Soros Warriors stayed at one wound. Yep. So you got that four up save. They no longer ignore rend one. Yep. Uh, the stats are both the same. Either you have the club with one inch range, fours and threes with a rend, or the spear with two inch range, fours and threes and no rend. So that, that, that's, how, that's how you differentiate weapons. You know, there should be a clear difference between the two of them, not like the, the sword that well, does nothing. when you're on a 32 mil base, you only have the spear option. You think the clubs are... I say I like rend, but you'd rather just go with the spear? So you can well, two attacks or one attack with a rend. Yeah, that's true. Also, if you have 15 or more malls in the squad, you got one attack characteristics. That's true, yeah. Um, st to me, lackluster, probably not really worth it because the 32 mil base. I don't see the, the place for the Source Warrior. I don't see the need to buy any Source Warriors. It all depends on... <sighs> you have to go deep. Like This is this is more time. We have to go deeper and deeper into the book. There could be something we're there missing. There could be something. But I don't, I'm having a hard time seeing it. A little, little, little boring. Uh, Source Knight, same thing. A little boring. Basically, I, yeah. nothing special. Basic attacks. The Saurus Knight is a Saurus on a cold one. He's got two wounds, a four up save. He's actually got the exact same rules, except you get plus one damage with a spear if you charge. Oh, he doesn't have the club. Yeah, that's right. His blade is two attacks, threes and threes. The Saurus Knight seem yeah, okay. Chameleon Skinks, really, really expensive. And then we come across the Skink skinks, characters. Well, yeah, it's, yeah Where I don't is know them. Skinks, um... They're the same, except for another garbage. No, I'm kidding. Uh, they're about the same, except for they can no longer fall back. We already talked about that. Right. So a skink at this point, you can buy them in massive units. I don't see why you would. You would, you'd rather just, you buy small units of them for battle line and hold them in back line objectives. They used to be a very, I feel like skinks before, used to represent what they were in Warhammer Fantasy. Very quick skirmishing all over the place. Yep. Getting in the way, annoying you. Getting in yeah. the way, annoying you. Now they, they get in the way and they die uh, with the slightest gust of wind like they have one wound six up save they don't they have no way to really stand up in combat they can have a five up save if they have shields which they're going to have you can give them ranged attacks that hit on fives the the yeah. skink priest has a command ability that gives the skink you know, plus one to hit okay. maybe um <laughs> uh and then they're like their old trapper uh they're you pray on a four plus and they give you a reroll to uh, save right uh, it's gone. Uh, you just pick a unit on a three. Uh, you pick a unit on a three plus. They can run or charge, or sorry, run or charge or run and shoot, or uh, and add one to their stables. It's just skinkiness though. But technically, I think I think 
Yeah, that technically works on the Stegodons because they got Skink. Okay, so Skink Priests. So maybe, yeah, Steg Stegodons again are coming up here. Okay, yeah, I can see a little bit of synergy there. So, he's so Stegodons, I think, got the biggest, are the only buffs. Oh, wait, the Stegodon has a Skink keyword? Yeah, buddy. He's got four Skinks on it. Huge, so that your Stegodons get plus one to their save, and if they're fighting a horde of something. Or anything, okay, so, so Stegodons yeah. now have the ability to keep their, what's it called, their crest? Their crest. It's like the, the Triceratops, like, concave kind of head bone thing. They keep that in between them and the enemy. So yeah, you pick one unit with, after, in the charge phase, start the, start the, start the, start the combat phase, yeah. you pick one enemy within three inches of them, um, if there's five or more models. And they get plus one to saves against that unit. I guess it doesn't have to be a horde. Most everything's got five Anything with five or more models, yeah. you get plus one save. And then so your four up goes to three up. And if you cast this, this prayer, prayer... It's not a three or more. It's a star stone a staff. Two up. He, he wiggles the staff in the air and then all of a sudden you're staking on a yeah. two up save. Now, the Sky Strike bow on the Stegodon went from, uh, I can't remember, I actually can't remember, but now it's three attacks, threes and threes, minus one, three damage. Yes, that's... I know that's, an, I know that's a buff, I can't remember why. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. And then, you know, the Skink Priest could help out uh, Salamander and Razor Dawn hunting packs if you really wanted to. Massive Horns do four damage, There's only two attacks each of them. They have Grinding Jaws, um, that which have an extra attack if you're coalesced. And then their Crushing Stomps no longer has 2d6, no rend attacks. It's just, a, it's a set five, yeah. but it, it, gets, it gets bracketed. Five attacks or threes and threes minus one, two damage. I mean, that That's better. That is, yeah. I think the Stegodon's better in every way. Right, which is nice. Like, again, not everything got nerfed, but they lost a lot of abilities and they, it's cleaner because I found that the Seraphim before were very complex with like auras and like character abilities and priests. Now it's just super simple. Uh, though, the stake, why does the Stegodon have a command ability? Okay, because you can also put a... Uh, oh, you can put a Skink Chief on him. On and make okay, him a hero. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> and then he gets the ability to... Get a command ability to give a Skink unit plus one attack to all their weapons. So you give it to this... His own unit. Right. His own Stegatron. And we found out throughout the course of the game that there's a very... There's a happy place where he's bracketed where you just throw all his dice at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, everything is... The, the brackets all line up, so... All the three of his weapons are hitting the same, wounding the same, with the same rend, the same, same damage. damage. Yeah. Which nice. Which is, I think, the... Uh, Mid one? The middle one. Yeah. yeah. Massive horns have to do... No, the damage. second to last one. So it's five to six and seven to nine wounds suffered. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you have, to, you have to be pretty much almost oh. dead. Then you can throw your dice. The away. engine of the gods. Massive oh. disappointment. So this is this seems to be massive one of your favorite ones. Yeah, massive disappointment. Um, it was a little strong before. It was... I wasn't that strong, but it was pretty good. But yes, it needed to be adjusted, I guess. So, well, one of the things. The cosmic engine used to be in your hero phase. You would roll... 3d6, th and then you roll an extra one. If you had a slant nearby, you pick. You just drop one of the dice. You right. pick which three you're going to use. Now, now you just roll 2d6, consult the chart. Yeah. Unless there's a slant nearby, you roll 3d6, and you use all three of them. And you, So this way you have no control with the slant. The slant just lets you get the higher result. It ranges from 2 to 18. Uh, if you roll a two or three, this model this model suffers D three mortal wounds as uh, it shakes violently in the universe of resistance pull. Four to eight, it heal you heal D three wounds allocated to each Seraphon unit wholly within twelve of this model. That's rough, but yeah. Yeah, and then bolts of Azir energy nine to twelve. This is the this is the one that got the biggest hit. This yeah. is your favorite one. Before. It used to do D six mortal wounds to an enemy unit. No roll required. Just bam, D six mortal wounds. Now it's on a two plus. Yeah, for D three mortal. Yeah, so you pick something within 24 and it might take D3 mortal wounds on a two or more. That's a huge hit. Huge hit. Uh, the 13 to 17 results, you can set up one unit of 10 Soros Warriors wholly within... Oh boy, you have to... You, if they're forcing Soros Warriors on you, wholly within 12 of this model and more than 9 away from enemy units, I add it to your army. That's cool. 13 to 17, that's on, you know, 3D10, that's above average, obviously. Or 3D6, sorry. The last one, for the rest of the turn, you can reroll charge rolls for Seraphim, wholly within 24 of this model, and double the attack characteristic of weapons used by friendly Seraphim. That's good, but you gotta roll three sixes. You have to roll that is three the, sixes. That is good, though. Let's be honest, that's amazing. Yeah, it is super But you're good. not, don't, you can't bank on that. There's no way you're gonna bank on that. And, like, again, you, oh. if you had this land before, you'd roll four dice, and then you got to pick which three you all, kept. All these Stegatrons have, um... Uh, at the end of the charge phase, roll die on a two, a two plus, you roll D3 oh. more wounds. Or is it three plus? Three plus. Yep. One enemy suffers D3 mortal wounds. You get D3 impact hits pretty much. Unstoppable um, so speed. Because of the change of the shields and adjustment of a few things, it feels like everything got a nerf. Right. Um, we might, not we, big nerfs. Some of them are. Not most of them are. We might have been. A, we might have sounded a little harsh at the beginning, but it's just they came from such a high pl in, in well, our I mind. Just, it just they they were never other than that one list, the, the right. Thunderquake. They weren't that good. Right. This edition. 
Uh, it just feels like everything kind of got a little bit worse. However, there might be a whole new way of playing them that might end up coming. Exactly. Out. There's, 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 they're not the worst army in the game. I put them somewhere no. medium-ish, like they were before. Oh no, they're bottom tier. You think they're bottom yeah. tier? Yeah. They're, they're, they're down there with uh, Beast of Chaos and Slaves of Darkness. It's, it's, it's be these three books. Okay, but Slaves of Darkness at least has Archeon. True. Well, we have Croak. Oh. Now there is one more thing. Which is really cool, and I think it's something I'm going to try. I think is maybe how this is going to, uh, going to be working. All of the bound spells are printed in this book, but th- sorry, endless spells. All of the endless spells are in this book, but they're bound. They're bound versions. endless spells. Yeah. So they're the same. When a slain cast, oh sorry, when a ser- when a seraphon casts them, these bound ones, only a seraphon model can or player can move them. So if you're both playing seraphon, they move. You ba- you roll back. You go back and forth. Still. However. I'm going to try playing a game where I just summon a bunch of these and only I can control them because I know my opponent's probably not going to be Seraphim. Right. Now, all of a sudden, the endless spells are useful. Yeah, so you have your... I'm trying to think of really good ones that... Um, uh, the Pendulum, but that one was already pretty reliable. Because that was Ravnix, a reliable one. Um, yeah, that one's good. Uh, you're fighting against Chaos of Swords, but, you know... Um, uh, I can't remember all of them. The Maelstrom, for sure. Yeah, can, yeah, because you can always keep that one out of range of your wizards. The Geminids, Geminids, yep. Geminids. The Geminids of Ooh, yes, um, you them too. Quicksilver Swords can, can be pretty good. Chaos, yep, that's a good. Yeah. One. The, chroma- the chromatic color. So either way, yep. knowing that you can have you have full control over the endless spells, uh, is tempting enough for me to try them out. Knowing that my opponent can't mess with these, so I'm gonna wonder. If, I wonder if I just play with a bunch of casters and summon them every turn. Well, you're gonna have to find your preferred playstyle because your preferred playstyle before was the skinks. Janky, yeah, yeah. So well, now I can do the jank with the end of the spells, hopefully. So I'll be like before uh, when someone would come by and want to play Seraphine. I'm like, ugh, I don't want to fight against Seraphine. I, I I didn't like the rules that they had. I didn't like their summoning. It was too good. I couldn't stand skinks. I couldn't stand the engine of the gods because it was too good. And then, in my mind, it was too good. Well, because you, you pick your dice, and you always pick the combination that gave you D6 more wounds. Exactly. And there's just, it was almost a guaranteed D6 more wounds every turn. So I was happy to see those get nerfed. They got nerfed too hard. Yeah. Like, way too hard. Way the too summoning hard. is summoning's next to useless. Well, that's not true. You can still summon 10 skinks on an objective. That's where it, that's oh. where it's caps out. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, really quick. So the hunting packs. Um, oh, yeah. So the three, the, th- the, th- the three crew, the three hunting skink hunters and the uh, salamander are one unit now. Yep. Salamander only has one wound, but he has three ablative wounds. So there's no extra bonuses for having guys. Actually, I think technically the Razor Dawn salamander have a wound characteristic of four, whereas everything else has one. No, they had, I think it's a, uh, double check that. Yeah. So the Razor Dawn automatically shoots one Sorry, unit. Wound characteristic of three. So you have you have four models in a unit. One of them has to be a Razor Dawn instead of a Skink Handler, and then oh. the Razor Dawn's got a wound characteristic of three. Okay, so they're they're actually okay. I'm gonna say they got a buff then. Okay. Because uh, Razor Dawn, yeah, okay. So Razor Dawn's uh, automatically, I believe, shoot one unit and then the charge phase if something gets within three of them. Oh, was it not automatic before? It was like a four plus. Okay, so they always stand and shoot. Yeah. And the the um, the Salamander, his damage is only D three instead of D six, but I think he only had two attacks before. Now he has four. Okay. So four attacks, threes and threes. Which is better. That's with a 12 inch range. Yeah. Um, minus two D3 damage. So, you know what? I like those. Yeah. Um, th- Which those, you can, you, can, you can utilize those quite well. But again, in the beginning of the video, when we sounded a little harsh, it was mostly because the, the, the Temple Guard, the, the, the Source Guard, yeah. and the Skinks yeah. got pretty big hits. Yeah. Skinks was a big one. Well, Skinks Summoning was, was a big one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, it just wasn't, it, it, they, they watched all the special away. You think, you think they got rid of it? Th- I feel like they I, I lost, we lost a lot of special. Uh, yeah. But I, I suspect if you go nothing but Stegatrons, sorry, right. people don't like me to do that. <laughs> if you go nothing with Stegatrons yeah. and like Slan and Ashleth Bear, I think you might have a You're very viable ball. list. Right. Um, that can do some serious work. I think, I agree. I agree. If you're, if you're going to play Coalesced, and you're going to have nothing but big dinosaurs, you have a lot of potential there. I just really, really wanted Source Warriors to be a viable battle line choice. Right. I think you're you're better off just playing Stegodons if you're going to play I, Thunder Lizards. Yep. Stegodons are battle line. I, I, I'd still rather have Skinks as battle line because they're quick and they can just stand on objectives and get around. True. They just move. Yeah. And then if you are Saurus Guard of battle line or only, oh. under, only under certain circles. Oh, sorry. There's one more thing we got to talk about. We oh. missed the biggest hit. Oh, what was it? Oh, yeah. The Bastilodon. Oh, he's got a one-up okay. save now. Okay. Okay. Bastilodon has ten wounds now. Instead of eight. Right. But the Bastillion used to have a three up unmodifiable save? Correct. Yeah. He doesn't have that no more. Now he's a one up save and you can modify it. Yeah. However, his save 
it's bracketed and bracketed fast. Yeah. This, once he suffers uh, three wounds, he has a two up save. Once he suffers five wounds, he has a, a three up save. Seven wounds, he has a four. It doesn't get worse than a four up save. Right. And his ability to ignore mortal wounds on a four up? Gone. Gone. Doesn't exist anymore. So he just gets annihilated by mortal wounds. Uh, and his, his gem attack. Solar engine? Better? Because it used to yes. be 2d6 of shots. Right. Now it's nine. Now it's nine. It gets bracketed as it goes down. Right. But even when you suffer five to six wounds, you still have seven shots. Right. Uh, it, it, the, at his worst bracket, it's five shots. Which is still not bad. So I'm going to call that part of him a buff. Right. Uh, rather than nine to five, uh, over the 2d6. Yeah, I, 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 I like consistency. But I would hate to roll like He can die three. now. However, if he's a Thunder Lizard, he'll have 12 wounds. That's true. He ignores... Reduces all damage on by one. Right, because of uh, Coalesce. Yep. You guys, um, it's always something. Don't forget that scaly skin is huge. Yeah. So I think I think monsters are looking pretty. And right. Coalesce are the way to go now. Yeah. I as opposed to the Saurus Warrior bricks. But you lose a lot of you lose your summoning. You lose your teleportation. Yeah. And yeah, Saurus Warrior is just garbage. Now I'm not even bother talking about the Titus Snakes, the Ark of Sotek. It's it's just as lame as it was before. So the tire snake. What's the Arcosotech? Uh, it's a snake. It's sort of the gem for the laser beam. You have like snakes. Oh, on his back other builds. Got you. Yeah, yeah. So you like the gem? Yeah, I yeah, like the gem. Snakes are useless. So I just, I'm I just, just happy feel, it's killable. I just feel like the book didn't wow me. A little disappoint. No, it was disappointing. It was a disappointing book. It wasn't great. Well, uh, to be fair, that might be subjective because a lot of your favorite aspects of the army got hit hard. Right. No. Yeah. Again, just so people are clear, like there's parts of it that need I know needed to be hit. Yeah. However. This is not fear near. Like, it is feel, this feels about as powerful as Slays of Darkness. I'm as, I'm as disappointed with this one as I have Slays of Darkness. If this book came out a year and a half ago, I'm sorry, I'm spitting, I'm getting a little. If this book came out like a year and a half ago, I think it'd be considered very, very good. Yeah, but now you but you look at releases like Iron Jaws, Flesh Eater Courts, uh, OCR Bone Reapers, all those and things are gonna ogres. Walk, all, are yeah. gonna walk all over this. I, I well, actually, oh, this might do well against ogres. Oh, that's true. Because of all the because that's true. only for Coalesce. <laughs> yeah, with, with scaly skin. Yeah, that'd be kind of a fun match. I'd play that. You know what? Maybe convince Matt to play Ogre. Well, I just, like it is. I don't, I don't, I, I love Beast of I don't care if the book is mediocre, like doesn't right. have power, as long as there's flavor. Right. And I feel like a lot of the flavor got washed away. Like again, I agree. A lot of their abilities got taken away that made them kind of cool or unique in a way. Now, like uh, a Source Warrior to me feels like generic unit with. So yeah, I guess to reiterate, excitement was here, read the book. Now it's here. But I'm going to keep playing this until I figure out how to find my excitement again. Right. Because I had the same problem with Beast of Chaos. Excitement was here. Reddit it was down to here. Yeah. And then after a while, I, I stuck with it. I found how to have fun with them and not a little bit. I love Beast well, of it's, Chaos. It's, 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 weird to see, it's weird to see the Saurus Warrior and the Temple Guard being one of the most fearsome infantry in Warhammer Fantasy. The most One of the most respected things to go toe-to-toe with being a joke unit. That's a joke unit. Yeah. Like, oh, even like, the same thing happened in Warriors of Chaos. They used to be one of the, sk- probably the best infantry at, in Warhammer Fantasy. Look at, arguably, arguably, the skink with the club is better in combat than the Source Warrior. The skink? <laughs> sh- is it, like, Kay. stats-wise? So, uh, fours and threes with the rend. Not bad. Uh, skink with the club. Fours and fours, no rend. But, but, but on a, t- uh, a 25, 25 mil, mil base. So, yeah, he's like, fours and fours, no rend, 25 mil base, and cheaper. And faster. And faster. Less save. But a four, what's a four up save these days? I'm saying shoot you. What? Can you take the club and a shooting attack? Yeah, you can have uh, sh- either the club and a bolt spitter or you have a bolt spitter and a shield. If you have a shield, you'll put one in your save. Okay. So. The Source Warrior just seems like. It was like I think it's the same problem Beast of Chaos had. I keep going there. It was like the, the gore, the ungore, and the best of gore. Right. You wanted the best of gore, the ungore, the gore had no place. I right. feel the same thing here. Source Guard. Or skink, the source warrior has no place. Right. It dis- again, disappointing to see. Hate to see it. Hate to see Hate it. To see it. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm done. Let's go play some more of your Sigma and see if I can figure out how to play these guys even more. I think you'll I, I think you'll find enjoyment. Actually, in I know, I dinosaurs. know I'm going to. I'm gonna just Big I'm gonna dinosaurs. do the stampede. If you had an old fantasy army from back in seventh edition where you had all stagadons, you're gonna love this new book because that's where it's at again. I I'd agree. That's <laughs> probably where you're looking. Well, that's it. Uh, remember, we have a game right now in the vault. I play uh, these guys versus Luca and the OCR Kabone Reaper. Those guys. Now, if you're not already a vault member, click link below. Seven day free trial. Watch that game. Give me your opinions. Uh, when you get your book, send me messages directly on how to play these guys. Maybe I've figured yeah. it out by then, but I will figure these guys out. I will find out how to win with these guys. Just how, 
as I've done with the Beast of Chaos, and I want to have fun with them, and maybe I'll start a new Seraph and Army yet again. Because now they're tame, and you can totally do that. I can. Now I can. I'm able to buy this army. It's all because I really, I did, I liked how your old army looked. That was beautiful. But I, it was, I, know, I right? never wanted to play against it. I, don't blame me. That's why I got <laughs> out of the office. <laughs> all right, everybody. That's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being our Should be members. Or, you know, if, or if you uh, support us on YouTube, you know, like, subscribe if you like our content. Actually, those are very important things. Yeah, comment yeah. below, like, subscribe. Yeah, just, just share join the video. conversation. Yeah. Tell me I was wrong about everything. I right. am sometimes. I'll be honest. Actually, looking through the book a little bit more, bouncing ideas off each other, doesn't seem it as always, bad. It always gets better in the second read. Yeah, exactly. It does, it does. Exactly. I'm glad you joined in on that with us. <laughs> See you guys next time. Happy Morgan.